picking out a skateboard can be very difficult. If you're someone who doesn't skate and you're just trying to get a skateboard for someone, or if you're new to skating and trying to pick out a board, or even if you have been skating for a long time, like me, about 14 years, and you're still spending 45 minutes to an hour just trying to figure out what deck you want at the skate shop, this video is also for you. I'm hoping this will be a helpful video. First thing is first, where do you get the skateboard? Now, I always say shop local. So for me, my local is Fargo Skateboarding in DeKalb. That's where I get my stuff or local skate shops that are around other towns that I'm in. Now for you, you might wanna go on Google and search local skate shop near me and find out where your local is. That way you're supporting a small business that the money's gonna go right back into the community rather than supporting what's a corporate business that kind of already has the money. Now, if you don't have a local, you can always shop online. Local skate shops oftentimes have their own shop online and that will still go to supporting them. Next thing. Where do you start? Well, I always start with the deck. When you walk into a skate shop, there's decks usually behind the counter on the wall or just around the skate shop. They're all over the place. And if you're new to it, it can be pretty confusing. So I'll explain to you how to go through that. First thing you wanna look at is the brand of the board. Kind of decide on a brand that you like and how it feels. Maybe you can ask the person behind the counter to kind of grab a few different brands or designs you like and just kind of lightly step on the board or feel it with your hand to feel the concave to see if you like how that feels. You might say, what is concave? Concave is how deep it is on the board. So kind of this area. Now, some boards have kind of a deeper one. You know, people make the joke, oh, I can eat my cereal out of that because it's so deep. But other ones, it's flat. And those are the boards that I tend to like which I know some people don't really like. So I go for those sort of boards, and as you can sort of tell right here with this one. This one's not really flat, but it's got a little slight concave to it. These are my favorite. But how do you know what you like? Well, if it's your first board, you might want to try one to find out you don't like it. Then your next board, maybe you can get one that's like a little bit less deep, or you can get one that's more deep if that's your preference. Once you've decided on that, the next thing you should decide on is the width. And the width correlates sort of with your shoe size, foot size. I personally have a shoe size that's 12, so I'll go for an 8.5. Maybe if you have like a size nine shoe, maybe an 8.0 would be great for you. Depends on how big your foot is, but sometimes people, even with small feet, like the wider boards. And how do you know what you like? Well, you might have to start by getting something that's a little bit too small or too big for you to find out. I don't like either. I want to get something right in between. So maybe the 7.5 isn't good for you and the 8.5 isn't good. So you get an 8.0 next time. Or maybe you got the 7.5 and you're like, wow, I need a whole nother inch on the board. So you buy an 8.5 or even, you know, they sell size 9, 9.25, like the wider board. Maybe that's your preference because that's how you skate. And I know plenty of people like that. That's okay. That's just different preferences. So to quickly recap, you want to make sure that you have the right concave and the right width. Now, once you've settled on that, you go back and look at the back of the board. Do I like the design? And different brands have different designs, right? Now, maybe you found those two things and you're like, oh, but the design's not good. So that's when you start looking for different boards. And at least you know the concave that you like because different brands have different concaves. I rode a board that was too deep for me at one point, and I was like, hey, I wanna try a different brand. I tried, I switched over to like a Crooked, which had the medium concave that I like. This is kind of how you pick out the brand. And then all of a sudden you'll find the concave, and you'll find the width, and you'll like the design in the back. And once you find that, that's probably the right brand for you, and you can keep riding those ones, or maybe you can branch off another time and try a different brand that's at least under the same distributor so that the board kind of feels the same. Next thing, once you have the board width picked out, you're gonna wanna pick out your trucks. Now, I picked out an 8.5 board today, but I asked, hey, what trucks will go with an 8.5 board? Because they sell trucks that are different widths, right? You don't want like a super skinny pair of trucks on this wide board because your board's gonna be all off balance and it's gonna feel really weird. You want one that matches the width or at least works on the width of your board. So I highly recommend asking a skate shop that. But if you're on the internet, you wanna make sure you get the right width. So these are 149s. These are great with 8.5s. You can maybe go down a size. I think there's only like three sizes in this specific truck for the smaller board. So maybe if you've got like 7.5, you wanna go with the smaller set of trucks. If you got an eight, you can kind of go with the medium set and then the larger set for the eight five. Trucks, just like boards, have different brands. My personal favorite that I've always gone with across the board is Independent. They've been a very reliable, trustworthy brand. A long time ago, I broke my independence in half. I immediately sent in a thing online. They sent me a brand new pair for free because their trucks should not snap. 
I don't know if that still exists, but that was something that I did. Now, there's another set of trucks that are very light. These trucks are called Tensor Magnesiums. This is what I first got when I had no idea. The guy behind the counter told me these trucks are very light, and I thought, wow, lighter trucks, more pop I can get, lighter board, I won't have to flick as hard. I thought that would be great. But a few years into skating, I quickly found out the Tensor Magnesiums were not my favorite. Now, this is a style thing. Some people to this day still like them because of how it makes their board feel, and that's great. If that's you, that's awesome. But as someone who's been skating for a long time and across the board, majority of the skaters I know are not gonna say, yeah, go buy Tensor Magnesiums. If you wanna be safe, real quickly, if you wanna support my channel, you can check out Liquid IV. I'll put the link down below for this that has a discount code. But right here, I have their Energy Multiplier that is lemon ginger flavor. And right here is their Pina Colada Hydration Multiplier. And they also have some for sleep and different purposes. And I use it all the time when I'm about to go skate or, you know, when it's really hot and you just keep buying water, keep buying all these extra drinks. These are always nice just to throw in there and you're not buying as much liquid and you're still at the skate park having fun. Back to the video. I'd say go with Independence. I know some people like Thunder Trucks. Sometimes this also depends on how much money you have. If you don't have that much money to put into trucks, you can kind of go with a cheaper brand. These tend to be not the most expensive, but they're kind of on the more expensive end of trucks. But they last you a very long time. Trucks are something that you basically never have to repair. I mean, I rode one single pair of trucks that were independents back on a skinnier board, I think for like seven or eight years before that initial snap happened. So. These things last very long and they should not snap anymore by any means. Now, another thing with trucks, the bushings that come on them. Usually these bushings are great, but if you're more experienced and you know that you don't like the bushings that come on these, that's fine. You can always go to the skate shop and get new bushings that are maybe more soft so you can kind of turn on the trucks a little bit easier, which means like they'll bend easier for your turn for those of you that don't skate. Now, how do those trucks attach to the board? Hardware. This is what we're gonna talk about next. Today, I actually had a friend of mine give me his own hardware. It's called static hardware. And you might ask, why did you get this hardware? I love that this hardware uses this tool on top of it. And if you can't see it, it's the one that's not a Phillips head because it doesn't strip. Oftentimes when you're using a drill or using something, that Phillips head just strips and then your hardware gets stuck in your board. I personally love hardware like static hardware. And I also another thing, this is a local brand. A lot of times like people around you sell hardware. So ask like your friends or ask if you can buy like a local brand of hardware. It's always better to support local rather than buying like an independent brand hardware, which is again, supporting a larger company that is not too concerned with their money. So uh, always try to get like a local brand hardware if you can. And oftentimes too, those will even be cheaper. Like the stuff with big brands on the hardware, it'll cost extra just because the brand's on it. It's not different. Like your friends aren't making bad hardware. Your friends are probably making better hardware because they've studied it. They know where the good stuff comes from. So always try to go local on hardware if you can. And by the way, anything I'm talking about, I'll put in a link down below so you guys can go check stuff out. One thing that's very important with hardware is owning a skate tool. Now you might say, well, I can do that with a drill. I have a screwdriver. I have all this... But who wants to bring all these pieces to the skate park? That's a pain. Nobody wants to do that. So your skate shop should have a tool that looks just like this. This is my personal favorite. It has the Phillips head attachment on the end here. It has the attachment for the hardware I was just showing you. And then it has this end to it. And it has all the opposite ends on it too. So it has this, this, that. And another thing you can do that's so cool is you can even thread your trucks. Sometimes the thread on the end of here gets weak after skating on it and landing primo enough times. So this just helps you fix that. And it's a great all around tool. I think it costs about 30, 40 bucks. This is called the reflex tool. Next, what do you need? Wheels. This can kind of be anything you want it to be really. Wheels range anywhere from like 30 to 90 bucks or maybe even up to 120. I personally have always gone with Spitfire wheels. I've always loved their Formula 4s. I got the 101 Duro 53 millimeters. Uh, I love the shape of these wheels. You can sort of tell the shape right here, but there's some that are even smoother where there's like not even an edge there. Those wheels end up kind of coning after a while and you see the wheel kind of come down to a point and you have to rotate your wheels and there's all sorts of problems with those wheels. So I personally love how these are. I don't even have to flip the wheel. I can just keep it on the one side the entire time and not even have to worry about that. But 
wheel size is everything. Some people like the fatter wheels and those wheels take a lot longer to wear down. They're also heavier, but when you get like a 53, maybe a 51 millimeter, 49, etc., it's a smaller wheel and it will wear down faster, but it's a lot lighter. So it all depends on like the weight of your board and how you wanna go about that. And also people like to look at like the material the wheel is made of. I don't really personally get that specific. I've just always seen my friends and people who are really good skate these Spitfires. Now, sometimes you can even find a local wheel brand. And if you can go with that, and you know it's a really good brand and you want to support local, always go for that because that is a great option. The wheels are another thing that lasts a very long time. My last set was another Formula 4. So I just kind of naturally went with these because I know the shelf life of them. So that's what made me feel good about them. But how do you make these wheels spin? Bearings. Now, how do you pick bearings? This is something I spent about 15 minutes on today. I saw a pack that I really liked and I grabbed the back foam and I went, oh my God, these bearings are $95. And yeah, if you have the money, those are great to buy, go with those. But if you're not looking to put more than what you spent already on bearings and you wanna go with like a cheaper route, I always recommend going with the Bones Reds or in this case, Bones Red Super. These bearings have always been really nice. Now, when I first started, I bought a very cheap brand of bearings it was like 12 bucks and those bearings lasted me i think two weeks and i lightly rode through a puddle one time bearings immediately stopped wheels were not spinning anymore so you do want to get like a good set my recommendation will always be bones reds and pick whichever ones you want out of the bones sometimes you might find a local person selling bearings it's not very often that you do but if you do you can always contact that person to ask them about their bearings and see what they say. And maybe you can buy those. You might be able to get those for a really good price and you're supporting the homies. Are we done yet? Mm, no, we're not, not quite. There's something else you need on this skateboard. Grip tape. This is the most important step of the whole skateboard. Now, how do you pick out grip tape? Well, there's a bunch of different brands and some brands sell stuff that's more gritty that tears through your shoes a lot quicker than other brands. And there's some that's like very not gritty and your feet slide all over it and it gets a little bit damp and it's like the end of the world. But I've found the kind of in-between ground on that and that has been Jessup Grip for me. Your local skate shop will sell sheets of this so you can buy a sheet and put Jessup on or maybe you like Mob Grip Tape. Mob is more of a gritty grip tape and that also is a preference thing. So if that is what you like, go with Mob. My personal suggestion will be Jessup. Now, another thing I highly suggest is there's always gonna be a local person that's making their own grip tape or even like on Instagram, there's different brands that make their own grip tape or even other things I've talked about in this video, there's people on Instagram that do that as well. But my favorite grip currently is Public Domain. It's spelled like P-V-B-L-I-C, Public Domain but it's called Public Domain. Check out this grip tape, it's so sick. So they have Abe Lincoln you can put on your board. And then I also have this design of theirs. So that's something you should always look into, a local brand that sells grit. I like Public Domain because it's in between like the almost hardly any grit, but like medium grit. It's like that fine line right between. And it's always been perfect for flicking. I don't have to like wear the grip in. I don't have to like sand it down any. It's just, it's felt great right from the jump. So that's been my personal favorite. But again, it's up to you to pick. Hopefully this has been a very helpful video to everyone across the board. You know, I kind of skipped around. I could have gone through like all the truck brands and all the wheel brands, but that would have been like a 30 hour video because there's so many. I just kind of gave you a description of what I like and why I like it. So hopefully that helps you kind of jump right to your decision a lot quicker than, you know, had I sat here going through all that. So this helped you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because that would really help support this channel. Check out the links down below. That will also help out this channel and it will help support local. And with that said, have fun skating and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.